Welcome back to Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. Today I'm going to show why the Rogue Rhino is my number one piece of home gym equipment. Stay tuned. I have had this machine for nearly two years and from the day that I got it, I said that it was my favorite machine. And while it's not as versatile as the Lever Gym, it does allow me to squat very heavy without loading my spine. And because I am so cautious with my lower back, I no longer put a barbell on my back. And this gives me that same feeling of overloading the quads without fear of injury. Of course, this machine is good for belt squats. I've made that abundantly clear in all of the videos that I've made. And as long as you stand directly over the pulley, it offers a vertical line of drive, unlike a lot of lever belt squats, which create shear forces on the knee and lower back. And even when I see some people use this machine, they stand so far back on the platform that it does in fact create shear forces. The only other belt squat machine that I have seen that offers a truly vertical line of drive is the Squat Max MD, and I don't want to turn this video into a Squat Max MD versus Rogue Rhino review. I've already done that. I will say I don't think you can go wrong with either belt squat machine, and the Squat Max does have a couple of features that the Rogue Rhino cannot replicate, like the transformer pin and the hip thrust add-on. And a year after the video where I compare the two belt squats, I stand by my initial statement where I say the Squat Max MD went the distance but it didn't knock out the champ. If you like free weights over machines, the Squat Max MD may be the better choice for you because of features like the seal row and the chest supported barbell row. And it does seem like most elite power lifters prefer the Squat Max MD over the Rhino. It is less expensive and it does have a slightly smaller footprint. However, I am more of a machine guy and almost all of my training is machine based, which is why I think I like the Rhino so much. When I first got the Rhino, I had it over there where the IM2000 is. And in my initial review for the Rhino, I showed a bunch of additional exercises above and beyond belt squats, and some of those exercises were better than others. I then moved the Rhino over into that corner to make room for additional equipment, and I had the weight horns facing out, which took away all of the machine's versatility. So in my newest garage gym layout, I have the Rhino front and center to take advantage of all this machine has to offer. Now it's time to show you what this bad boy can do. Let's get started. I'll start off by saying the two 16 inch stainless steel horizontal weight horns are much easier to load than vertical posts and they take up less space than belt squats with weight horns that extend past the platform. The Rhino's platform is about 26 inches by 48 inches and the pulley cutout is only 3 inches by 10 inches which enables a variety of stances including close. I put a 3 foot by 4 foot horse stall mat on the platform that requires fewer cuts than the 6 foot by 4 foot horse stall mat and the stall mat provides grip when using accessories like squat wedges. Here I have the 1211 squat wedges with a 17 degree angle and these seem to work very well for me. With the wedges I can bias the quad, less ankle flexibility is needed, and I think it's more lower back friendly. Two separate squat wedges work better than one long wedge due to the pulley's placement. I am a big fan of wide stances on the Rhino as I can lift quite a bit more weight and for programming, I use a narrow stance on my quad dominant leg day and a wide stance on my hamstring and glute emphasis training day, so I am using the Rhino on every leg training day. The machine is incredibly robust as it weighs 530 pounds, which is as heavy as some selectorized machines, and the 3x3 uprights give it a bulky look that I like. With the Rhino moved into the middle of the garage, I can add the Titan Fitness single leg squat roller for split squats. I have the roller 12 inches high in relation to the platform, and I like this better than doing lunges on the Rhino, and it gives me the opportunity to do some unilateral leg work. Supposedly Rogue will eventually release a seat for the Rhino, but the Ironmaster Superbench Pro works well for the time being because the bench can slide under the 7 inch tall platform so that I can perform box squats with nearly a vertical line of drive. I added some stall mats to increase the height of the 17 inch bench. The bench has a 1000 pound weight capacity when in the flat position, but I've never gone heavier than 445s for this exercise, so the bench could potentially pop up with heavier weights. Standing on the edge of the platform works well for calf raises, but I am being pulled forward a little, so I think it's advantageous to add a calf block for standing calf raises. Here I am using the Iron Master calf block, which is nearly 4 inches tall, so it allows for a deep stretch. And again with the horse stall mat on the platform, I don't need to worry about the calf block slipping. I spent some time experimenting with the donkey calf raise in the Rhino, and of all the options I tried, this seems to work the best with the Iron Master Superbench Pro and the Preacher Curl attachment. Band pegs are standard on the Rhino, whereas some belt squats don't have them at all, or you have to pay extra. I really like bands for marches, and I think it's a great way to warm up, or just for GPP, 
general physical preparedness. And for me, if I ever feel tightness in my lower back, I will add some bands and just stand, which seems to be very beneficial. For some exercises, the carriage will need to be lowered all the way down to take the slack out of the pulley, and the arms will need to be tied into place. A strength band works well. This leg curl with the Iron Master Super Bench Pro angled at 10 degrees, just like it is for the leg extension leg curl attachment, feels extremely effective, and it's a great replacement for a standalone prone leg curl machine. I don't do deadlifts, but I at least want to show from the side what it looks like on this machine, and it does work very well, but I just can't take the risk. The hip flexors can be worked standing or supine like I am here. This just provides more stability and I am using the grizzly ankle straps. The core even gets a little work with this exercise. Speaking of the core, this is an extremely difficult curl up using the Iron Master Super Bench Pro and the Iron Master sit up attachment. And the pulley can even be used for rotational exercises like this low to high twist using a revolving D handle and a cable extender. And I can't forget the glutes. Straight leg kickbacks work well with the grizzly ankle straps, as do bent leg kickbacks. So the first exercise can be taken to failure, and the bent leg kickback can extend the set. The Rhino really shines for curl variations. First and foremost, a standing curl feels awesome because of the vertical line of drive. For a lot of high-low pulley combos that attach to racks when doing curls, the cable has to travel diagonally. The Rhino also works great for preacher curls. Here I'm using the Iron Master Super Bench Pro and the preacher curl attachment. Again, so much of this video highlights the Rhino, but it also highlights how awesome the Superbench Pro is. One arm preacher curls using a revolving D handle are another great option, and I prefer the cable over a one arm dumbbell curl when the arm is supported on a bench or preacher curl pad. Spider curls, popularized by Steve Reeves, Vince Gironda, and Larry Scott, are another great exercise with the Rhino's cable, and if you have a bad back or just want to place almost all of the focus on the biceps, supine bicep curls hit the biceps really well. I've had some people ask if the cable gets frayed from exercises like supine curls or seated rows, and on the Rhino, the cable doesn't touch anything. I like to use the cable for a variety of wrist curls using the Super Bench Pro and Preacher Curl attachment positioned in the vertical position. When I neglect forearm training, I seem to pick up golfer's elbow and tennis elbow, so I have to be diligent with these exercises. For rows, I can't use the Super Bench Pro. Instead, I need a bench with a frame I can position against the Rhino so the bench doesn't slide forward when the weight gets really heavy. I have stall mats between the Rhino and the bench so that I can get a full range of motion when using the Iron Master Ultimate Row Handle. And if I sit high on the bench, I can hit the lats harder. And if I sit low on the bench with an overhand grip, I can hit the upper back harder. One arm rows are another great option, but the bench will need to be offset. This isn't an exercise I would hang my hat on, but if you didn't have the rack mounted rhino with the slinger, and if you didn't have a pull down machine, if for example the basement ceiling isn't high enough, this may get you by. For a lateral raise, I have a one foot chain creased and attached to cable extenders, and those are attached to my grizzly ankle cuffs. This gives me a very good lateral raise while only using one pulley. And by simply turning around, I can do Y's to hit the upper back. Also, I can get added stability by bracing one foot on the platform. The Rhino is great for shrugs, and I'm using the Iron Master Ultimate Row Handle so I can get a neutral grip, which is my preference. I don't think the Rhino is great for chest exercises. However, a kneeling one-arm press feels pretty effective and a decent substitute for a functional trainer. And laying perpendicularly to the Rhino will work okay at lighter weights for a one-arm press. I'm locked under the Iron Master sit-up attachment for added stability. With the daisy chains attached, I can do a very good standing tricep extension, but I prefer moving the bench against the platform for a seated incline tricep extension using two tricep ropes. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If so, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment. In the comment section, I would love to know what exercise you think is the best and if you think this machine is as good as I've always said that it is. I am a Rogue affiliate, so if any of my videos have helped you, please consider using my Rogue affiliate link if you purchase a Rhino. Also, you can find me on Instagram at Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. And remember, if your equipment lacks, I got the hacks. Take care, everyone.